Hello, my name is Jocelyn, you may call me Joy. I'm interrupting the normally scheduled stuff to bring you information that I think really just needs to be out there because I don't see anyone else talking about this. This is information that I found out last week that my researcher sent me and I've been sitting on whether or not I should in fact make a video about this. It is not my personal story to tell. I have no personal investment in this. I knew none of the people involved. But I see no one talking about this and it's really hurtful and shameful. Any people that I normally follow and something you must know about me is that I am terminally online. But none of the people that I imagine would talk about this are talking about this. Whether or not they know is completely unknown to me. But with that being said, I need to firstly trigger warning. This whole video is just a trigger warning. I'm going to be pretty much just reading the information that I have that has been brought to us by Jess O'Thompson with a few interjections of my own thoughts and opinions, but I will keep that to a minimum. The thing to focus on here is that we are talking about facts and discovering information, and the result being that one of the most high profile murders that has happened in this country in this year was that of a 16 year old transgender girl. One thing I do want to point out right now is that Jess O'Thompson throughout this entire thing has been incredibly respectful of Brianna and everyone involved of course has just been referred to with letters for the sake of anonymity, for the sake of safety of the other intended victims as well as the following will also contain information about the accused. They are referred to simply as X and Y because there are rules in place about anonymity and protection of people's identities, especially considering this is still an open case. It is also accepted that Brianna Jai was killed with a knife that belonged to Y. Y had told X that he would have the knife with him that day and that it was sharp enough to kill Brianna. However, each defendant denies that they are guilty of murder. Each denies that they participated in Brianna's killing at all. Each blames the other. The prosecution case is that Regardless of whoever delivered the fatal blows, both defendants are equally guilty. Acting together, they planned and executed their plan to kill Brianna Jai. X and Y were close friends at the same school. Messages recovered from their phones suggest that they were close friends who were in regular contact with each other and trusted each other. The prosecution also argues that such messages also show they were preoccupied with violence, torture and death and record them discussing how they wanted to kill people they knew. They encouraged one another to think about how they would actually carry out a killing and show how they planned together to kill Brianna in just the way that she was in fact killed. So already we know that this was a premeditated event. By two very sick individuals. Messages show that the pair discussed killing multiple people, not just Brianna Jai. For example, Y fancied a girl called A. Worried that someone called M was getting too close to Y, X offered to help Y kill M. X said, you can restrain him as I kill him, so it's easier. A reminder before I outline the following that this killing has not been charged as a hate crime. Also worth noting that the prosecution submissions dead name Brianna, saying Brianna Jai was transgender, she was born male and given the name dead name. 
No doubt we will see this repeated frequently in the press. The prosecution say that X was intrigued by Brianna. She sent the following message to Y. I'm obsessed over someone I know, but don't have feelings for them. She's called Brianna. I don't know how to explain. Also, she has a dick, LOL. Y responded, is it a femboy or a X told him that she was trans and that she sounded just like a girl and looked really pretty. Y replied that they had different tastes and asked, again referring to Brianna as it. Tell me what you feel when you interact with it. X said she got nervous and stuff, but her heart felt normal. Y responded, I don't think you're necessarily in love, but I think you're more curious and intrigued by its unnatural nature. X agreed that she found Brianna fascinating, saying she's really different. You can see from the messages back and forth that these two people had different ideas about Brianna, one of them being curiously obsessed, the other completely dehumanising her. That sounds like enough evidence for a hate crime to me. The prosecution outlined that this obsession by January this year had turned darker. X sent Y some pictures of a pair of scissors and a tissue with blood on them saying that she was going to eat human flesh. X told Y, I fed them a fuck ton of tablets and then cut their wrists with scissors and then I slit their throat and blood went everywhere so I had to get a fuck ton of tissues. Y, clearly unconvinced by the photos, asked, was it your femboy thing? X replied, no, they went on holiday. I didn't have a chance to. A few days later, X and Y discussed that they would try to poison and kill Brianna Jai using red ibuprofen gel tablets. Messages show that this was specifically chosen as a method knowing that Brianna was depressed and overdose would not be suspicious. X explained to Y, you know that girl I mentioned, Brianna, I'm still trying to kill her and the easiest way is pill overdose. Please, people already know she is depressed and shit, so nobody would get sus, but for some reason she has a high tolerance. Like I gave her some today that should have been enough to kill her. X explained to Y that although Brianna had messaged to say she had felt bad and thrown up, she didn't die. When X told Y that she had given Brianna an overdose of ibuprofen tablets, it seems that she wasn't making it up. Her mother, Esther Jai, recalls an occasion during that week when Brianna was sick. Her mother recalled that Brianna was in real pain and thought she was going to die, that it might be appendicitis. She recalls that Brianna was sick and the vomit contained what she thought were grape skins, but may well have been the remnants of red ibuprofen gel tablets. X continued the conversation claiming to have killed multiple people. There is no evidence any of these events happened. The conversation eventually turned back to Brianna. X said, Brianna is still ill. Those tablets I gave her might slowly be killing her. She said, I was in so much pain in my stomach for real, girl. Y replied, if it gets worse, she'll get taken to hospital, but her liver should be done with it in a few days, possibly by tomorrow. X said, she feels a lot better than before, though, but still really ill to the point she can't go to school. Y then suggested that she should use an ibuprofen gel paste, adding, try mixing them, maybe the different chemicals will make it more dangerous. He sent X a screenshot of a pro... God, these people. He sent X a screenshot of a product she could buy at Tesco. He also suggested using lye or sodium hydroxide, which he described as very dangerous. He suggested that X could add it to Brianna's drink, saying that she would have to drink it fast since it's acid. X said, I want something to pour into a drink that's easy to get, odourless, and kills her quickly. 
why I spent the next hour and a half researching such substances, eventually telling X, unfortunately, I can't find how fast it kills, but I think it kills fast. What this means is they were planning this thing for weeks, if not months. And they had tried and failed to poison Brianna. How were any of us supposed to feel safe when these were clearly people who at least one of them knew her intimately well enough to have given her poison? Why, in a WhatsApp with some others, suggested killing another child, E. Oh my god. These fucking horrible people. He sent images of E who just He sent images of E who he described as a nonce. Y said, I want to see him either beaten to death or kill himself. Either one will make me happy. Y told his friends where the boy lived. When one of his friends suggested that they should get someone to petrol bomb him, Y replied, that would be funny. They should record it and post it on every social media. Later the same day, X contacted Y asking for help in killing some other people. There is a lot of this, which I will not cover in detail. Multiple detailed plans to murder other people. By the 26th of January, 2023, the defendants had compiled a list of four people they wanted to kill in addition to Brianna. Oh, God. These people are so sick in the head and they are, they are both minors. It's a horrifying world. They created an Instagram account named The Come Lord for what the prosecution argue was for the purposes of luring out E to kill him. After E blocked this account, X messaged Y and said, if we can't get E tomorrow, we can kill Brianna. Y agreed saying, yeah, it will be easier and I want to see if it will scream like a man or a girl. They then discussed how to kill Brianna with X saying, we need to think of a plan. Y said, but the body plan is first. If we know what we're doing with the body, we'll know what we can and can't do. X then suggested, let's stab her, original E plan, back and throat. A few minutes later, X sent a message to Y. She's agreed to come to Colcheth tomorrow. Y replied, so I bring my knife. X said, yes, it is definitely sharp enough, by the way. X said that the arrangement was for Brianna to meet them at a library, then they would walk to the park. X told Y that after they met, they would go over the plan again, and I'll show you where I'm killing her, and then we both walk to the library to meet her and grab onto Brianna, slit her throat. When she starts to fall, stab her in the back, then pass me the knife. I want to stab her at least once, even if she's dead, just cause it's fun, LOL. Just the sick mentality of these fucking people. <sighs> when Y asked whether she would not have her own knife, she replied, I got a chef blade. Y said, let's have two words, one for getting the knife ready and another to stab. The following morning, X responded, for get knife ready, I'll look at you and cough, and to say stab, I'll say gay. End of session. That's the end of the proceedings for today. I'll be back tomorrow. A reminder that so far we have only heard from the prosecution. The defence has not yet presented any of their case or evidence. I'm sure by now that probably has happened, because this information is from a week ago. However... From what I've seen there and read there, it's... It's absolutely chilling what these sickos 
decided to do. It was obviously premeditated. To my mind, at least, there is enough there to suggest that it was a hate crime against Brianna because she was trans. But even if it wasn't, even if that was just incidental, which they will probably try to push for considering there were other victims intended as evidenced from the messages that it doesn't change the fact that a bright young future has been just snuffed out and that more people really need to know what happened I'm gonna go cleanse my mind with some eye bleach now because that was revolting. I'm genuinely saddened by this sickness, the depravity that is the human condition. Obviously not everyone is like that, but my God, that. More fun videos are coming up in the future, but I couldn't ignore this. It was just too important. Until then, look after yourselves and each other. Just want to cue, there's a siren.